Gore the God Butcher, first appearing in 4 God of Thunder issue 1, created by Jason Aaron and Isat Ribic in 2013, was an overall fantastic villain regarded by most of the community for a multitude of reasons. Today, I'm going to break down only three of the core reasons why Gore the God Butcher is one of, if not the best Marvel villains to be created in the past 20 years, in my perspective. Now note, I will not be discussing the live-action adaptation of Gore in Fall of Love and Thunder, as although he was still a fantastic villain in that movie, there were a number of reasons why the comic version of Gore worked so much more and served a much greater purpose to the story. And finally, there are several other reasons why Gore's an unbelievable villain, which you can see here. Also, just a quick note here that um, we are focusing on Gore the God Butcher from four God of Thunder comic uh, issue run, nothing else. Now with all that out of the way, let's get into the first reason why Gore is a great villain. Motivation. Arguably, the most important thing that makes a great villain is a fantastic motivation. For example, a Marvel villain that instantly springs to mind is Galactus, the world devourer, uh, and his motivations, his primary focus is to keep the universe alive, which he does at the price of consuming planets, so then he can leave and live and preserve life in that universe. Gore's motivation is to kill all gods as he did not protect his family from dying. His own kind abandoned him for simply saying that the gods didn't care, which he was right. Gore's entire family died because the gods did not help them. Thus, once he gained the power of the Necrosword from its dying owner, he slayed his first god out of pure vengeance and anger. Gore has an ultimate distaste for gods. Thus, Gore wanted to balance the time stream by eliminating all gods in all of that reality. Thus, bringing peace and not having to worship gods who wouldn't answer their prayers. This leads on to a, my next key point very nicely, which is his actions. A great villain can be, and in Gore's case, certainly be able to back up their wants and desires through their actions. And in Gore's case, he wants to kill all gods. And what does he do? He proceeds to enslave gods to create a bomb that will kill all gods in all time and space. He does kill, or for a better lack of terms, butcher, uh, gods on his way, torturing them as well, including a young Thor who just manages to escape with his life after Gore tormented him for 17 days. He even traversed the time stream after attacking Kronux, the, one of the time gods, or the entire time god's planet, to lay claim to the Pool of Forevers, in which he used it to go back in time, kill one of the first elder gods, bring rip out his heart, and use it to create a god bomb using, well, the god of bombs as the person who creates it, of course. And, well, he then proceeded to travel into the future to claim a world in which he would use to enslave most gods to create the god bomb. And the only god he did not enslave or kill at that point was All Father 4, who he tormented over his failures, losing his army of dark minions created by Nec by the Necrosword, often referred to as the Black Berserkers. Over the next 900 years, that's exactly what Gore did, made God's mind broken planets and the cause of stars from materials to build the God Bomb, which he intended to use to exterminate all the gods across the entirety of the time stream. So, um, yeah, Gore more than proves his status of as the God Butcher, which leads me on to the last point I want to discuss. Being arguably one of, if not the most horrifying and brutal Marvel villains ever. In all honesty, if what I've discussed about him hasn't convinced you of this already, then just know that not only did he kill an abstract of his wife created by the Necrosword after she referred to him as simply as a god, just a simple gesture like that, and Gore kills her. Absolutely brutal. Um, as he also recreates his son using the Necro Sword. But also, in the climax of um, For God of Thunder storyline, 
um, he took on three fours, and it took the present day four wielding two Mjolnirs, and part of the Necrosword, or in fact the entirety of the Necrosword, ripping it away from Gore to kill him, which in turn killed both present day four and Gore. But even then, Gore did not die from that attack. It, he died from the past four decapitating him. So, in all honesty, it was one of the most legendary moments in Marvel comic book history, and I definitely do recommend you check it out. Um, and there we have it. Three of the many, many reasons that I could have delved into and why Gore is a top-tier Marvel villain in the comics. Now, although the live-action interpretation of Gore was a bit of a letdown, the comics version is to be, if not one of the most brutal and compelling villains in Marvel history.